This episode of On the Record is brought to you by Osmondson. From their Made in America steel to their Made in America process, Osmondson is proud to stamp Made in the USA on every Osmondson blade manufactured. For over 100 years, Osmondson is committed to manufacturing blades with strength, pride, and innovation. Visit www.osmondson.com. I'm Executive Editor Kim Schmidt. Welcome to On the Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. According to the latest dealer sentiments and business conditions update, our dealer optimism index, which measures sentiment among dealers compared to the previous month, turned positive after double-digit drops in March and April. Sentiment rose to plus 9% in May from negative 40% in the previous month. Sentiment has bounced back since reaching a low for the year of negative 66% in March, down from negative 3% in the prior month. This was the largest month-over-month change in dealer optimism since this data was first collected in April 2011. Several dealer comments on the survey reflected this jump in optimism. Some dealers reported strong sales despite the current economic uncertainty. As one dealer from the Appalachian Northeast region put it, people are continuing to farm and buy equipment. Sales activity is still pretty strong in an uncertain market. Some dealers mentioned specific segments of the equipment business doing well. Despite the pandemic situation, business has been very brisk in the lawn, garden, and rural equipment customer areas, said a dealer from the Lake State's Northern Plains. Farmers are also feeling more positive according to the Purdue University's latest ag economy barometer. The barometer rose 14 points to 117 from a reading of 103 in May. This is still down 7% from the reading a year ago, however. In addition to overall sentiment, farmers are also feeling better about making large investments in their operation. The Farm Capital Investment Index improved to 60 in June, 10 points higher than the May reading. Over the last four months, the survey has asked farmers about their plans to purchase farm machinery in the upcoming year versus a year ago. Since first asking the question in March, the majority of farmers plan to buy less machinery than they did a year ago. However, in June, their sentiment for machinery purchases returned to pre-COVID levels. The report says, on the surface, this appears to be consistent with an improvement observed in the investment index. According to the survey, 44% of farmers say their machinery purchases will be about the same or higher to the coming year compared to 56% who say they will be lower. This week's dealers on the move include Lone Star Ag and Mitchell Equipment. Texas-class dealer Lone Star Ag opened a second location in Dalehart, Texas. Case IH dealer Mitchell Equipment has acquired the assets of Beller and Bax in Humphrey, Nebraska. This is Mitchell Equipment's second location. Now here's Jack Zemlicka with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thanks, Kim. As farm equipment continues to become more automated, tracking up and down time to the hour, especially with leased machinery, can have a significant economic impact. For ag input retailers that offer custom application services and lease fleets of sprayers, spreaders, and floaters, the ability to monitor machine hours, fuel costs, and labor time allows for an accurate analysis of return on investment. Steve Cubbage, Vice President of Services at Farm Mobile, a farm data company, suggests that equipment leasing could become an increasingly popular option for machinery dealers and also provide an opportunity to include or expand value-added tracking services. He shared an example of a recent product trial the company coordinated with an ag retailer in Wisconsin and the opportunity to improve tracking and performance monitoring of machinery. They actually had a machine that was on a five-year lease, 2,000 hours total, and it was coming to the end of their five-year lease, and it just so happened that they really weren't monitoring it real well, just manually. And they overshot that lease by 200 plus hours. It was over a $30,000 plus overage that they went over on a single machine. We can basically do a better job of, of at least, you know, services around identifying where each machine stands at, you know, any given month or even any given day. Cubbage adds that for dealerships already specializing in or looking to expand application equipment leasing programs with ag retailers or farm cooperatives, the ability to customize tracking could be an attractive incentive to grow that business. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Jack. 
production of fuel ethanol, which uses 35% of all corn produced in the U.S. and supports the sales of farm machinery in a big way, will undergo a three-stage transformation that will result in fewer well-capitalized players with diverse revenue sources by 2025, according to a new report from Cobank. The COVID-19 outbreak exacerbated headwinds the industry was already grappling with, which included reduced gasoline consumption and softening exports. Kenneth Zuckerberg, author of the Cobank Report, says the industry currently has excess capacity of 1 billion gallons, and this is expected to increase to 2.4 billion gallons in 2021. According to data from the Energy Information Administration, U.S. ethanol production totaled 15.8 billion gallons in 2019. Operating margins for ethanol producers have been declining since 2014 and are currently averaging 15 cents per gallon versus the historical average of 28 cents per gallon. Nonetheless, top-tier producers continue to produce positive operating margins or at least positive cash flow, says Zuckerberg. He says, in our opinion, bottom-tier producers will not be able to manage through the current COVID-19 environment without access to additional capital, government support, and or a significant uptick in demand following a reopened U.S. economy and greater export activities. By 2025, we expect the U.S. ethanol industry to undergo a three-stage transformation that will result in fewer, better capitalized players with revenue diversity beyond fuel ethanol, Zuckerberg says. That diversity will include production of higher margin co-products, such as high-protein distillers grains for animal feed, carbon dioxide for refrigeration, beverage-grade alcohol, and other industrial products, including those used for personal hygiene like hand sanitizers. What will emerge is an ethanol industry that's more resilient to supply shocks and able to flex production and increase or decrease in fuel demand and exports. Now here's Associate Research Editor Ben Thorpe with an update on USDA's Rural Broadband Initiative. Thanks, Kim. According to a June update from the American Broadband Initiative, last year saw several steps taken to promote rural broadband access. However, there is much left to be done until rural America has reliable, consistent access to broadband technology. The fight for rural broadband access is nothing new. It has been a priority issue of the Equipment Dealers Association's annual legislative fly-in for several years. According to a 2019 USDA report, rural broadband has the potential to bring considerable benefit to U.S. agriculture through precision farming. Smaller producer coordination topped the list with an estimated $2.9 billion in potential annual gross benefit. This was followed by remote diagnostics and predictive maintenance at $2 billion and yield monitoring technology at $1.8 billion. In total, the report estimated broadband could bring $254 billion in potential benefit to U.S. agriculture. According to the American Broadband Initiative's June update, 80% of the group's commitments to broadband access are completed, including several for agriculture. One example is USDA's ReConnect program, which offers loans to rural broadband projects. To date, the program has invested $744 million in more than 80 broadband projects. Additionally, the report notes several initiatives created by the Federal Communication Commission. These include its launch of the Precision Agriculture Task Force, which reviews the connectivity needs of precision agriculture. The FCC also issued a recent notice requesting to establish the 5G Fund for America. The proposed fund would make up to $9 billion available to carriers bringing 5G connectivity to rural areas. During the Farmer Panel of Ag Equipment Intelligence's 2020 Executive Briefing, Mitch Lazenby, a grower from Auburn, Alabama, said he has personally experienced the problems caused by a lack of broadband access. He reports being unable to use certain equipment on his farm in the past two years as a result of poor signal. According to Lazenby, a lack of broadband access will create rural pockets, leaving farmers behind who are unable to use the connective features of their own equipment. He believes manufacturers are incorrectly assuming all their customers have full access to broadband connectivity. Back to you, Kim. Thanks, Ben. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lustermedia.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us. <laughs>